Hello everybody, this is Matthew. And uh, today I thought that we would look at this Norelco shaver that I, I found at a uh, antique store um, yesterday. And I just I saw it and I was like, ah, oh, this is this is so cool. I, I have to I have to get it. But um I don't know if you can see, I'm sorry, I'm kind of working at a strange angle here. Um, I found it for 13 bucks, but it is a Norelco Speed Shaver, and um, yeah, it's it's really cool. The uh, um, it's funny because it's got some very retro um, style stylistic stuff here, and um, it looks like that they were doing these in the late 50s, and um, and then up into the like mid 60s. Um, but yeah, it seems like it was. They were really touting the fact that uh, that these have circular blades, and they're they're nothing at all like the straight razors you've been using, and things like that. So really cool commercials. There's a couple of them on YouTube. But other than that, um, I don't really know an awful lot about them. Um, also, I have had it open already, and yeah, the stuff inside, I really don't exactly know what all of it is. <laughs> it's, uh, everything's just too old. I've, um, I know that there's, that there are some resistors, um, in here and, and, but it almost seems like there's just several different, um, it's almost like there's a ton of resistors and that they're creating, um, like, uh, resistive dividers on the physical resistor. I'll have to show you, but, um, something that's kind of cool, it says it's a product of Holland, and on the back of the case here it says Holland there as well. And um, the it also says that it supports um, AC slash DC and 110 volts and 220 volts. So it's kind of supposed to be somewhat international. Um, and the... It says it's uh, 12 watts on the back, and yeah, but it's really interesting. The uh, if you if you really pull these things down, that's basically where you would empty the the hair out of. And I actually shaved with this, and it did fine. <laughs> um, but it's the same style of of uh, blades that you you see in pretty much not modern Norelco shavers, and um, and on the sides here, you can see that, that this whole faceplate is essentially just held in with some heavy spring tension. So like if we lift up and then push over, the little springs will go down. Then we can lift out the actual tray and you can see it's like basically the same as what you'd see in a modern um, shaver. So really kind of interesting. Um, and then You've just got the two screws in here to hold on the... Uh, these two screws hold on not this faceplate as well as these springs. And and they also go through and then hold on the springs that hold back these little doors. And it's uh, you can flex it down and yeah, it flips out. So, uh, but let's take a look on, look on the inside. Oh, do I actually, before we do that, let's... Uh, Something I haven't done is actually check to see what sort of um, power this does put out using a, a any type of meter. Oh, I'm in a strange angle and in a strange place at the moment. I am a baby, well, animal sitting my my sister's pets while she's on her honeymoon. So this is at her house, and I've just got a tripod set up with a, and then a, a couple of random tools handy with me. Um, because, you know, how do we not have tools being nerdy types? Um, <laughs> so the plug's kind of, it's just this sort of square plug. Um, there's no switch at all on this. You just plug it in and it starts going. Um, and the, this plug says 50 watts? Yeah, 50 watts at 125 volts. So, yeah, that's like, you know, so, what, a 
half an um, what 5.5 amps, 7 amps or something. They think that you can put through this cable. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Uh, so not happening. But um, anyways, <laughs> different standards, I guess, huh? Um, so it just sort of flops in there a little loosey goosey, and I brought in a uh, extension cord that I had in the car and kind of just split this here, kind of messed up a little bit, splitting it down, down here and so I've got some tape around that. <laughs> but let's uh, bring a clamp meter in and then just see what sort of wattage this thing actually um, is going to do here. So it said, um, what, 12 watts on the back? Yeah, 12 watts. So yeah, we should be perfectly fine in the two amp range. Um, one second, I'll flip this around. Okay. And it's already zeroed out, so that's good. Plug her in. You can hear it take off like it's a lawnmower or something. <laughs> um, it's when it runs, it makes a very uh, warm, old uh, power tool smell. Um, and it doesn't feel like it's that much more um, powerful than, or it actually feels less powerful than a, a modern razor. Um, but it seems like it's, if, it's, doesn't, if it's not under load, it just runs at 65 milliamps. If we push down on it, kind of stall it a bit, it goes up to 196, 200 milliamps, something like that. Now it doesn't sound so happy. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's see here. What sort of range was that? So we got up to uh, like 200 milliamps. We'll go with that. So 200 milliamps, um, let's bring in the phone here to do a calculation, see what kind of, uh, um, wattage this thing is actually drawing. There's the calculator thing app here. One second. Bad, you know, you get to the point you just have too many apps and you just can't find what you're looking for. Okay. So, we'll do, um, the high end is 0.22, oops, sorry, is, uh, 0.2, uh, so 200 milliamps times 110. So 22 watts is when it was stalling out there. Um, it is interesting that you can stall it out just by pushing on the face here too. Um, doesn't exactly feel like it has the most power in the world, but I, it shaved me fine, so that's a good start. Um, and then on the low end of that, it was going uh, 66 milliamps, so uh, 0 0.066. Times ten. So seven point two six milliamps. So so non with no load, seven point two six milliamps on a higher load, it's uh the twenty two uh I'm sorry, seven point two six watts and on under load uh twenty two watts. So um not very efficient as far as um, <laughs> electrical instruments are concerned. Um, anyways, let's uh, let's take it apart and see what it's inside here. All right, so it's held on with uh, two screws here, and then one in the back, and then let's take off this black this back clamshell part here. It feels really good in the hand. The, the uh, it's very um, 
ergonomic. <laughs> Oop. I'm kind of curious to see if the uh, um, the new blades work inside these old razors still. Uh, that'd be kind of cool, kind of a throwback. Um, the I'll make sure and do a follow-up video with with that and also just um, what some of these components in here are that I'm not sure of. I, I posted a couple of, of posts about it up on some forums just because I really don't know old tech at all, you know. Um, I'm pretty sure that the majority, if not everything in here, is actually resistors. Um, but because I didn't see anything like um, any comp anything capacitor-ish or anything like that. But uh, inside we've got a uh, universal DC motor. How are these components? Yeah, it smells warm, but it's really not. Um, do I'm going to get around the other side of this camera to do some close-ups of this so we can see it. Um, There it is, and you can see you can see that this is def some definitely some resistors and they're tubes, hollow tubes inside. They're either resistors or uh, I know that they made uh, PTC thermistors that are that are like this, which I guess could be kind of how they they deal with separate voltages. Maybe if after a certain, it keeps it from the current from going over a certain level to, regardless of the voltage or it's kind of strange but then we've got this here which is throwing me you know we've got this it's almost like they're creating a resistive divider or something <laughs> that uh that um attaches directly to the surface of the resistive material um really interesting but on the end here you can see that it's just hollow it's hollow and this is basically a loose wire going inside. And then it seems like it's bonded at this end. And I just, I don't really understand it. Um, here's a, another resistor. Uh, yeah, you can see it's bonded on this end as well, just uh, without a wire actually going through it. So, but yeah, and then see, we've got these guys over here that are like, um, these seem more solid, like they're filled with something, and they have connections on the ends and one right in the middle, and there's four of them. So, really bizarre and interesting, and um, it's almost like this part here is like a slate or something. <laughs> but uh, then if we look on the back here, we've got the uh, the rotor here. And you can see you've got like a commutator, a commutator disc in here instead of a commutator, um, uh, like the com bars are arranged in a disc instead of around in, on a, um, uh, gosh, what is it that I'm trying to say? Cylinder. There you go. Cylinder shape, you know. Um, I don't see any like lacquer really, maybe a little bit on the windings, but... You can see they've got this uh, balancing slot cut out in here, just one. Um, and then uh, up at the top, you see it's a, a brushed motor. So it's got these little brushes, and if we, you can just change them by pulling this little spring back, and then they'll fall out. Um, but yeah, really kind of interesting. I'm going to have to. Uh, if I don't get some some uh, answers quickly on these, I'll probably just lift a couple of legs off of some of the components and then test like a, the differential between certain points and things like that, just to confirm what I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, you know, since it's a uh, since it's a universal motor, it's uh, self commutating and and will work on AC or DC. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what it would work on if I were to 
uh, I'm kind of curious to see what I would, what this would work on if I were to, um, essentially hook this up to a bench power supply and then just power it directly. Cause I think that this, all of these resistors and stuff are really just to have, let it cope with running off of mains voltage. Cause those windings are not very thick. So, um, but yeah, kind of interesting. It's got this sort of ceramic plug piece here and then it splits off into two sections. Um, but I think, I think I'm just, that's all I'm going to do for this video. Um, and then we will, then I will come back once I, and make another video once I have tried the modern razors on the end here and also tried lifting some legs off of some of these components to try to confirm that they're resistors. Uh, I do see a color code on this one here, um, but either there is no color code on the rest of these components or they're c covered in carbon dust because you can see there's a there's a lot of carbon dust in here from that uh, from those commutator um, brushes so but other than that you know it's in really it seems like it's in really good shape seems to work really well um, might need a little bit of tuning up but uh, it it gave me a nice shave so that's kind of cool might just use this as my shaver for a little while well, I guess I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and um, if anybody knows anything about these uh, or any of these components, please let me know. Just because uh, I really don't know, um, I really don't know vintage electronic stuff, and um, yeah, just and I I don't know much about these. I all I could really find on them were that they had some videos on YouTube that somebody had posted of the early earlier models. I couldn't find this particular style of model. So, um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. You have a